Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jonathan Denica, alongside Nick Internosia. We are here for another edition of Hunter and Central Wrestling. Tonight is senior night, and Hunter and Central is coming off a record-setting season in 2016 and from uh, 2016 and 2017, which they won 24 dual meets, a sectional title, a district title, and were the Group Five state runner-ups. The Red Devils wrestling team is off to a 7-0 start this season and ranked in the top 10 in New Jersey. On Wednesday, we'll be taking on the Skyline Conference rival Blue Streaks of Warren Hills. Tonight is senior night. I already mentioned that. We will be led by the seniors Hunter Graff, Kevin Sarisa, Angelo Crespo, Reese Young, Tyler McManus, and Corey Fryery. The Red Devils has al have also seen a major impact from three talented freshmen, Brett Unger at 106, who is undefeated this year at 11-0, Colton Waleski at 113, and Norman Sella at 152. They are looking to continue their fast start to the season. Last season, the Red Devils defeated Warren Hills 34-25, and they are looking to continue their winning ways against the streaks. So, Nick, we have a really big team here, and it is senior night. We have a lot of fans here. So what are your expectations from this Hunter and Central team tonight? Well, it's obviously going to be a good match. They've faced Warren Hills before, and uh, they're, they're obviously a good team. So big crowd, high tension. I think it's going to be good. Right you are, Nick. I think this is going to be a really good really good match tonight. So starting off for Hunter and Central, we're going to have at 138, we're going to have Pasquale Vizzoni. He is a junior, and he is actually right back from an injury. He is 2-0 on the year already. So we actually have a few injuries on the bench uh, for the wrestling team. Unfortunately, Reese Young is injured um, for this match with a sprained ACL, I believe. Hunter and Central is lining up behind their chairs, getting ready to come in for the senior night. We'll have senior night introductions in a little bit, and we will stand for the anthem, I do believe. Just recently, actually, the JV wrestling JV team defeated the Warren Hills JV team 27 to 9 in a fairly easy uh, takedown um, with a very good showing from Hunter and Central wrestlers. Later in the broadcast, we will be joined by Nick Brunetti. We will be beginning senior, senior night festivities as the uh, commencement has already started. Out come the little Red Devil wrestlers onto the mat, around the circle. Real energetic.
Kevin Sarusa comes out for senior night. He is the first of, I'd say, eight seniors tonight. He is greeted by his mother and his father, handing her the traditional senior night rose, posing for a picture out on the mat. Kevin is a four-year varsity letterman for the Hunter and Central wrestling team. He is an amazing wrestler with a lot of skill and a lot of future in his, pat in his course. We just learned that Kevin is actually going to be wrestling at the State University of New York, Cortland, where he'll be studying geology. Out comes Angelo Crespo. He is a huge man and a huge presence on this wrestling team, weighing in at 220. He himself is a three-year varsity letterman with 12 years experience here, bringing his wrestling career here to Hunter and Central, along with his brother who graduated last year. And now we welcome Nick Brunetti to help us along with the broadcast. Out comes Corey Friary. He himself is a varsity letterman, I believe, and he's greeted by his mother out on the mat. Corey's come a long way in his wrestling career, only wrestling for two years, and he's already made varsity here at Hunter and Central. Hunter Graff weighing in at 132 pounds. Hunter Graff is 11 and 1 on the season, and he's greeted by his sister, his mother, and his father out on the mat. He's been wrestling for eight years, and he's been a varsity wrestler for I'd say his entire four years here. He's a four-year letterman for this Hunter and Central wrestling team. Out comes Vivian Hall. She. <laughs> Vivian Hall is actually uh, not a wrestler. Uh, she's been doing, uh, she's, she's been part of our team all four years and has been really helping out with the scoreboard and, and coming to matches and just really, really helping out from a coaching standpoint. Out comes Tyler McManus. Yeah, 
Tyler McMahon has been uh, recently varsity uh, this year, but uh, he's been doing really well, weighing in at 138. And he's been uh, wrestling for uh, five, six years, five, six years now. Out comes Lucas Polkowski, another big name we hear on the wrestling team a lot. He's going to be greeted by both of his parents here on senior night. Out comes James Reese Young. Reese has been a huge, huge influence here on this Hunter and Central wrestling team. He's actually out right now, I mentioned this earlier in the broadcast, with a sprained ACL, I do believe, uh, after a um, false start in a match um, the other week. Rachel Young is actually out on uh, out on sick leave right now. Uh, she's been out for a few weeks, but uh, has really been uh, seeing some growth through the season and through the you know different years of wrestling. Um, she, she, she's been she's been a great uh, portion to the team with uh, being the one of only two girls, um, but she's been doing really well. Rachel and Reese are actually brother and sister. They're both seniors here for Hunter and Central. So it's kind of interesting to see a set of twins here for Hunter and Central wrestling on the same team. Absolutely, absolutely. The Red Devils, of course, are led by coach John Canagallo Rome. He himself is a legend here for Hunter and Central. Um, He, he's been here for four years uh, as an assistant coach, and now he's, of course, taking over the head coach role. He himself was a varsity wrestler for four years. They're going to call quickly for a mat wipe and out, and before the Blue Streaks can take the mat. So Nick, as a wrestler, how have you seen the season going so far for Hunter and Central? You guys are off to a really good start at 7-0, and and you have a lot of good talent already here for Hunter and Central, and a lot of upcoming talent as well in uh, a, few, a few freshmen. Uh, as we mentioned before, Brett Unger already 11-0 and on the season, um, and Colin Leschke and Norman Sella. They are all uh, really good freshmen and a very good future to the program, I think. Absolutely. You know, I tell you, John, the, the, uh, the matches have been going great this year. Obviously, we're 7-0. and We've been, um, you know, whooping other teams' butts left and right, and we've just been doing really well. Um, the guys have been working, you know, really, really hard in the room, um, especially, you know, the freshmen. We, we've seen this year uh, uh, definitely standing out over other years um, is how the freshmen have really ta ta taken a step up and realized how, what it means to be part of the Higher Central Wrestling team, its commitment. You know, it's courage. You know, you're stepping onto the mat with just yourself um, and just leaving it all on the mat. And, you know, ja especially, you know, Brett Unger has just been, um, you know, just amazing on the mat this year, um, really stepping it up at such a light weight at 106, um, really stepping up and really putting the effort in the room. Um, you know, Colton Wojcicki, the same thing. You know, we, people, we saw him coming up through the, uh, you know, through the little program as you saw in the broadcast earlier. And uh, we saw him coming through the same program, and we didn't think he was going to, you know, be that starting varsity spot. And uh, he came up and, and definitely, uh, you know, 
blew the coaches away and blew all the other wrestlers away with what he can do. And uh, same thing with Norman Shaw. Uh, Norman Shaw weighing in at 152 has just been uh, extraordinary with, uh, with, with you know, just blowing us away in tournaments and stuff like that, going against these top, you know, level ranked guys. Um, and he may lose some, you know, he's, he wins some, but if he loses, it's not by much, you know, he's uh, definitely leaving all on the mat, you know, likes to grapple, likes to, you know, use his legs a lot. So we've definitely seen some great things from him this year so far. I can already tell just by seeing the, the, the culture that uh, uh, Coach Kanagalo has built around the wrestling team. And the, 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 they have this such drive. And I know, I know you've experienced the drive that the, the wrestlers have experienced and that they really want to be here. They're willing to work, and they really want to win. And they came so close last year to winning the States, and I'm sure you, you want it this year as much as they did last year. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, jo you know Coach Kanagalo has just been – an extraordinary coach. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any, you know, other opportunity to experience any other coaches here at Central. But uh, you know, you know, Co Kenigal has just been a great coach, along with you know, uh, Coach Hall, uh, Brian Bistis, and Colin Hewitt, um, who've all wrestled here in their high school in their high school careers. Um, the coaching staff has just been creating this environment to keep us driven and keep us motivated. Um, and you know, you, you truly have to earn and commit. Um, to be on the Hunt Central wrestling team because that, that drive is like, uh, in my opinion, no other sport um, like it. Um, but, you know, that, that drive is what shows on the mat. That commitment is what shows on the mat. And it's uh, really been uh, showing off so far. I was talking to Coach uh, C earlier, actually, and a lot of people don't understand that a lot of wrestling is more... Uh, mental than it is physical, and a lot of people don't see that. He was talking about it. He was actually comparing it to a chess game. The, he said the amount of research that goes into the opposing team is so is so lengthy. You have to know each and every wrestler and figure out who is going to be the best opponent in your lineup to go against uh, in their lineup. So it, it's it's a very evenly matched and very strategic in a way. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think it's a lot of physicality. But I'm sure you can attest to the mental aspect of trying to out outthink your opponent. Definitely, definitely. You know, 100%, you, you, you couldn't be any more right. Um, I've talked to guys that are, you know, in college, out of college, going to college that are wrestling in these, uh, in these top schools, you know, Rutgers, Penn State, um, Iowa, Ohio, all these great schools, and they tell me all the time, you know, Nick, it's 90% 90, it's 90 mental and 10% physical, you know. Whether that's true or not is can 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 be debated, but uh, you know many many will tell you that it's you really have to do your research into what the other guys like. You know, as a coaching staff, they look at who what guys they have at different weights, and if they bump a guy down, bump a guy up. You know, if a guy's you know sick, hurt, injured, um, you know he's looking at their past matches, see what they like to do. It's a very strategic game, and you know there's no doubt that it's that's very physical, and you have to be a strong wrestler um, to win these matches, but. If you have that tick, technique will beat strength any day. You know, you, you get that technique, you, you know what a guy's good at, you know what a guy's bad at, you stay away and you, you, you stay together uh, on you know, what he's bad at and stuff like that, and just, you, you really try to, uh, you know, use that strategic advantage. Of course. And now I'd like to talk about the seniors a little bit more. Uh, Hunter Graff has had an historic uh, career at Hunter and Central. I believe we heard a hun over 100 wins and just under 30 losses. An incredible run here as his four years on varsity. And a lot of other seniors have had a lot of success as well. Uh, Kevin Cerisa uh, with 84 wins, hoping to uh, top that 100 mile marker um, at the end of this season. Yeah, you know, Kevin has just been uh, doing fantastic and uh, he's, he's he's been doing great, and it's it, you know uh, Kevin and, and Hunter both have just been you know really been taking charge and, and taking a stand as captains on the team and leading us, and you know they've just been doing a, a great job with that, you know showing the commitment, the leadership, and what it takes to really leave it all uh, all out on the mat. The Blue Streaks are still out here warming up. I'm not sure I know much about this team, but I know that Hunter Central beat them last year, and Hunter Central really has the drive to win this year. And I, I know you said it already, but th they really want that Hunter, uh, that uh, state win. Absolutely. You know, Warren Hills is, is, is a very good team, no doubt, and it's not going to be an easy team. There's really no such thing as an easy team. Um, but, it, you know, if you go out with that mentality, it's, it's an easy team. You know, you, you lost right off the bat. You have that, men have th have that mentality going into it. And, uh, but I, I have no doubt that, that Hunter Central is going to be, do, uh, be doing very well tonight. But like I said, you know, you got to have that, uh, 
have that mindset, that positive mindset going in you, that you're going to win every match. Looking forward to next week, I believe, you guys are going against Phillipsburg, a dreaded team that we yes. know a lot about. And they, they are a huge wrestling program, and I'm excited to see this match. Absolutely. You know, Peberg next week um, is definitely going to be uh, is definitely going to be a match to see. Um, you know, Peberg has always been a constant, a constant rival of ours, and you know, just with with the, the skill level of them is uh, is very, very, very good. You know, we lost to them last last year by just two or three points, and it killed us. Um, but I'm you know I'm fairly confident that this year we're ready to come back and we're ready to. Uh, to take that drive to them and get our win back. Peberg is at led by senior Brian Meyer, who actually committed to Lehigh University for wrestling. So he's been wrestling since uh, middle school and probably even before that, but he's a huge force to be reckoned with on that Peberg team. So I'm, I am excited to see that match happen. Um, whether it be here Absolutely. or there, it's going to be amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Peberg is uh, going to be away next week, uh, but Brian Meyer is you know, a force to definitely be reckoned with. Um, you know, he, he's definitely, he's the type of kid who has been, you know, every wrestling program, every year, putting in the effort, putting in the work, and when he gets to high school, it's really been paying off, and uh, he's definitely going to be a force to be working with next week. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, starting off tonight uh, for Hunter and Central's varsity wrestling is Pasquale Vizzoni, and like we said, he's 2-0. and He's actually back from an injury. Uh, wishing him a speedy recovery, and we really hope to see him come back tonight even better. Another few wrestlers we could actually talk about are the Romanello brothers. Anthony Romanello is a sophomore, and Vincent Romanello is a junior. They have been wrestling for most of their life. I actually went to uh, Del uh, Delaware Middle School with them. They have been very, uh, very, very invested in the program, and they're doing very well this year as well. Vincent eight and three on the year, and Anthony eight and two on the year. So very big years from them starting off so far. And what have you seen from them as a dynamic uh, duo, I'd say, for Hunter and Central? You know, An Anthony and, and Vincent uh, have, have really been, uh, you know, just great wrestlers this year all around. Um, you know, obviously Vincent has just been, you know, really dominated their opponents. And, you know, he's been doing super well this year, really putting the effort in the room. You know, I've been working with him a lot in the room, and he's been doing, doing really well, definitely getting a lot stronger. Um, but he's definitely trying to work on his technique this year. Um, you know, coming back, you know, he was just sick just the other day. Um, so coming back from that to wrestle today is definitely going to be something to watch out for and see how he does. Um, but, you know, his, his brother Anthony Romanell, definitely, you know, at a much lower weight, uh, but definitely a force to be re reckoned with. You know, a very lengthy kid. Um, we're going to be seeing, you know, a lot of, a lot of legs from him uh, today and, you know, definitely moving the guy around on the mat, you know, using his, uh, his positives to his advantage. Um, so he's, he, hopefully he'll be uh, doing very well today. Looks like we are about to get underway here at Hunter and Central. Again, Pasquale Vizzone is starting off here for Hunter and Central, weighing in at 138. Lights are down, and the wrestlers are getting ready to come out. Wrestling, of course, is a huge deal at Hunter and Central. The fans here almost rival the football games that happen. There's the banner in the back. Seniors are, and the rest of the team are ready. Hunter Graf, Kevin Sarisa lining the front here. Here they come. T-shirts come flying into the crowd. Not a lot of people realize this song is actually called Running with the Devils. 
Um, started back before, you know, Kanagawa was a coach. Um, it has not changed since. It's a pretty cool tradition to have a warm-up song that actually embodies what Hunter and Central is about. You're running with the devils here at Hunter and Central. Absolutely. You know, we, we, we constantly, you know, e even though re uh, this wrestling is this very individual sport, it's just as much as a team sport in the sense that, you know, we're working together and, and striving together and, you know, just, you know, coming together as a, as a team and supporting one another. So this song definitely uh, gets us going. Talk about our heavyweights for a second. We got Ryan Joyce and Angelo Crespo. They're warming up together in the center of the mat. Angelo's actually 5-0 and on the year. He's one of the senior leaders on this wrestling team. And Ryan Joyce is 5-6 and six on the year at 285. Being at that high of weight class, there's a lot of power behind you when you come up to there. You got a lot of comp good competition when you're up there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Ryan Joyce has really been, uh, really been another force to be working with this year. You know, he's been doing really well. Um, you know, at such a heavy weight, it's definitely a different style of wrestling, and the amount of power that, that you know that he puts out um, is really strong. But you gotta remember, you know, the other guy is just as big, if not heavier, you know, especially at heavyweight. Um, so it's really different style of wrestling. But he's been doing super well with his technique in the room, and definitely been working on, on his strength, um, which uh, you know we saw against the Boundbrook match a few weeks ago. Um, wrestled with the uh, number six kid in the seat. Uh, in the state, sorry, and uh, you know he lost him, but not by much. And you know he's very disappointed by that. But you know it's it's top six kid in the state, and he's going to see him again. He's just got to work on it, um, and you know just keep striving for that. So I think tonight he's going to do uh, really well against their heavyweight. There's a lot of power involved for heavyweight, but I think, like you said, technique is going to be the deciding factor in that. Absolutely. You, you can have all the power in the world, but if you don't have the technique and n know how to take your man down, you're not going to get very far. Exactly. Potter and Central is all warmed up and we are ready to go. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, or not the Pledge of Allegiance, excuse me, but the National Anthem.
Beautifully sung by Brianna Graff and a dog. There is a dog in the crowd tonight here at Hunter and Central. Starting lineup will be read off for Hunter and Central. Out comes the starting 138 wrestler for Warren Hill Blue Streaks. Squad of his own in Tyler McManus, 138. They're gonna be first up ready to go. Chris Osteer, another, uh, another great wrestler that I've seen been growing up through the years. It's a Romanello 45. Norman Shell, a freshman on the team. We're going to have to definitely uh, see him this year, see how he does. Looks like Warren Hill's gonna be forfeiting that match. Another forfeit by the Boys Blue Streaks. So since the Blue Streaks have forfeited two matches already, are 12 points added to Hunter and Central's total score in the end? Absolutely, yeah, so that's exactly. Um, so usually, uh, it depends, usually they'll start with the 12 points and start 12-0 um, in the beginning of the match um, most of the time. So uh, we should see a 12 come up on the board uh, pretty soon. Puts them almost at a very, very distinct disadvantage right off the bat here. Absolutely, but you know, you, you can't lose the fact that it's won by the actual matches. You know, there's more matches than forfeits. Um, so, you know, you get those forfeits, it may give you an advantage, but if you don't wrestle, you know how you're supposed to wrestle, you could really lose that match easily. Of course. Dan Fermato, Kevin Stress, and Hunter Graff as the captains today. Dan Fermato is actually a junior. He's 10 and 2 on the year. Yeah. Chris Kawhi Vizzoni coming out at 138. And we're off here at Hunter and Central. Pasquale down on his knees already. Looking for a Probably quick take for an underlock. Oh, it flips him down. Headlock. Simmons around, he gets his two. Squad of zone trying to bump him down. 
Goes for armbar. Backs out of it. Ooh. That's a reversal on Warren Hills. Two and two. Warren Hill's given a lot of pressure. That's time. Fifty-four seconds in the first period. Two and two. the map is quite going for the overhead and he's out central three and two Takedown for Pasquale Vizzoni, five and two. Four, three, two, one. That's the end of the first period for Pasquale Vizzoni at 138. Iron Central diverse. Warren Hills is gonna take bottom for the second period. Now, from my understanding and talking with players before the match, as soon as uh, Pasquale scores the sixth point, the match is over. So the way it's going to work is, you know, uh, from a basic understanding, when he t gets takes the guy down, uh, when they're standing up, he takes him down. That's two points. Um, when he gets a reversal, meaning if the Warren Hills guy was to uh, go on top of the Pasquale right now, he would get two points. Um, and then for Pasquale, uh, what they're referring to as six points is when he gets him on his back, both shoulder blades need to be touching the mat. Um, that's called a pin, and that's 16 points towards the team. Right now it's 5-2 individual, 0-0 zero, zero team. Yeah, Pasquale Vizzoni has really been uh, stepping up this year, you know, coming back from, uh, from a, a meniscus surgery. Oh. Um, you know, similar to one he had a year or two ago um, on the other knee. Um, he's been really wanting to get back in the room and really wanting to work. And we definitely saw the fury last week. And we're, you know, we're hoping to keep, keep that fury up and keep that fury going because um, he's been off the mat so long. He just wants to get back and wrestle. One minute on the clock in the second. Squad dropping to the legs. Squad trying to run a move on the arm bar. He gets it. Will he get the pin? He's set on back. He's got three back points, but no pin. Three back points. Third choice goes to uh, Iron Central. Iron Central Red is going to choose down. Third period, eight and two. reaching behind. 
He gets the reversal. It's two point Hunter Central, eight and two at the moment. Correction, ten and two. Coach Sia Wrestler himself knows exactly what he's talking about when he, he he's he, he's watching his opponent his opponent and his wrestler and knowing how to get around it and how to um, really work on the offense. And Pasquale has been taking this uh, uh, an offensive stance this entire uh, this entire um, match and really really taking over his opponent physically and mentally. I think absolutely. You know, you know, you know. Co you hear the coaches constantly yelling, and you know they're just not yelling him to go. They're they're looking for spots, looking for. You know, arms or, or, or legs or moves to you know to put in, and you know if we, he he can see something from his point of view that Pasquale may not see, um, it's definitely definitely helps out in a few matches. So, you know, you see the coaches yelling, and you think you <laughs> think they're just yelling just because, um, but uh, no, they're they're definitely uh, telling them what to do, and uh, definitely helps them out during the match. Pasquale being very aggressive this match. You talked about his fury before coming back and getting back on the mat after he being being oh. really really He's all close off on the, the pin. mat. Will he get the pin for Central? Thirty-four seconds left on the clock. Shoulders are close. Nadi brings it back. Three points higher than Central though. Thirteen-two. Short time on the clock. Yeah, Pasquale's definitely bringing the fury. You know, from being out so long, he, uh, he he's definitely shown some some aggressiveness that want that wants to be on the mat, wants to wrestle. Great, great first showing here from Hunter in Central. Pasquale Vizone takes his. Third, third win after coming back from an injury. Out now comes Vincent Romanello. Wait, at 145. Again, he is a junior uh, at eight and three. It's a Romanello taking the offense in neutral. for that hand control. Romanello looking for some control. Great snap by Vincent. Fifty seconds in the first period, zero zero. Still neutral. It's out of bounds. Very, very neutral first period overall. Not very, uh, not a lot of action from either side. I think Roman is trying to take more of a mental approach this game, as he's he hasn't really taken his opponent to the ground, but he's tried, and he's like trying to. I think he's trying to like figure out his opponent before he tries anything too showy for the crowd. Absolutely, you know, another side of that is, is definitely set up is, is key. Definitely, absolutely, you know, neutral more than anything. You know, he's trying to set something up, trying to get the guy to move his leg or move his arm to where he wants it to take a shot. Ooh, that was close. Out of bounds for uh, Vincent Romanello. But like I said, you know, he just got his, has to get him in the right spot and, and just wait for that moment. 
you also said like Romano was trying to figure out what to do and how to make his attack um like worthwhile, how to make it like effective. So it, it's not a very it's not a fact of the matter that he can't take him down. It's the fact of the matter that he's tr he, he's he's trying to learn what his opponent is doing and how he can learn to take him down in the long run. Absolutely, you know, you know the certain guys, you know, you'll you'll see um, you know, when you're wrestling them, when you go to move them and stuff, they like to plant their legs or keep their legs still when you move them. That tells me that, you know, he's a very, he, he, he likes to move his legs a lot. You know, he, he's, you know, for example, he might, uh, the same guy will be on top and he'll be, you know, riding me with legs or something like that. And I can just tell from neutral, um, especially if it's, you know, a guy that's a lot of upper body, you know, you try to move him with your arms, trying to get hand control and you just can't get it. But then, you know, his legs might be weak or something like that. So, you know, you, you definitely look for those positives and negatives, um, you know, in, in how you wrestle him in neutral. And to try to stack him in the second, 0-0. Zero, zero. I don't know, but your arm is not supposed to bend like that. No, it is not. Call that a potentially dangerous when the uh, ref stops the match because uh, you know something that the uh, may hurt the wrestler. It's a false start on uh, red. Caution, 100 central. <laughs> Romanello taking control on top. It seems here as his opponent hasn't even tried to make an attempt to get on top, or he's trying and Vincent just keeps overpowering him and has the technique to keep him on the ground and trying to flip him. Absolutely, he's got, that, he's got that pressure. You know, the, the, the key thing is pressure, hand control. You definitely want to control the guy, you know, don't let him post his arms out, you want to break him down. You know, you, you see him working, you know, working, trying to bump him over left and right, left and right, you know, and uh, trying to break him down, keep his legs in. Because if he gets out, you know, it's one point for him, so. Definitely got definitely to work on keeping him down. 0-0 zero, zero for Vincent Romanello in the third. Romanello has shown a lot of power already here uh, in the first two periods. So if he can get out, he'll, he'll get the point. But we need to see this happen first. To one escape for Vincent Romanello. I don't think his opponent has the technique or the power to keep Vincent Romanello on the ground, as we saw Vincent Romanello taking his opponent down fairly easily and keeping them there um, when he started on the top. That's takedown two for Vincent. Three and zero oh halfway through third period. Ooh. Beautiful head lever by Vincent Romanello. Rest count the back points, but will he get the pin? He's got three back points for Vincent. Six and zero. Oh. Vincent taking serious control of um, this match here in the third period with six and zero. Oh like you just said, Nick, but I think he, he, he might be able to get the pin here if he can get him on his back. He's got run out of time here. He's got 35 seconds on the clock in the third period. He's got to work something here. Trying to run that arm lever once again. Blue streak's not given to him. Short time on the clock. That'll be a win at for 100 Central at 145 of Vincent Romanello.
Vincent taking serious control of his opponent there in the third. Not a lot in the first and second th periods, but c complete control by Vincent Romanel, mentally and physically there. Norman Chella, 152, a freshman, coming in at 152 pounds. Um, definitely showing, uh, showing the coaches, uh, you know, some great wrestling. Right off the bat, staying really aggressive, you know, using his height for to his advantage, um, pounding on the guy's head. Um, you know, that's, that's something a lot of taller guys will do, a lot of lengthier guys will do. Um, so right off the bat with that aggressiveness. Norman Chello trying to work something here. He's trying to spin, trying to spin. That's a two for Warren Hills. Escape for Hunter Central, it's two and one Warren Hills. 40 seconds left in the first period. Norman is holding up really well here. He just needs to figure out how to how to beat his opponent. He needs to figure out how to get on top. His opponent might have more experience than the, him in high school wrestling, as Norman is only a freshman, as we've mentioned before. But a seriously fine addition to Hunter and Central's already fine addition of wrestlers. That's two for Hunter and Central. Norman Shella, three and two. Short time left in the first period. Norman takes a few words from Coach C. And Norman will start out on the bottom here against his opponent from Warren Hills. It's an escape for Norman Cella. That's a takedown for Norm. Six and two. Minute 40 left in the second. Now, do you think from a coaching standpoint, a, f a few wrestlers have a, uh, an advantage of being on, like, the bottom when they, like, will a coach defer a uh, coin toss to say, like, yeah, I want my, I want my wrestler to be on the bottom to, because he's better at escaping than being on top and keeping control? You know, abs absolutely. It really all depends on the wrestler and it depends on the match. Um, you know, you got, if you're, if it's zero and zero in the third period, um, or, or sorry, in the second period, and you know you're not you're not winning by much, and you're you know he, he, you're fairly confident he's going to get on bottom. You're going to put the guy on the bottom, you know. But if if, if you know it's a toss up in the match, you don't know how he's going to do. The uh, coaches will usually defer um, to the other team, let them go. Usually they'll choose bottom uh, and go from there. You know, trying to get them back those back points. Um, but it all depends. You know, some you know coaches like to go neutral if the kid's really good at neutral. But it really all depends on the wrestler. Um, but I, I find that, you know, usually coaches will defer in the second and go down in the third, but that's, that, that can change very easily. Mm -hmm. I only asked because I saw Norm, Norman starting on bottom and then ended up getting three points off of a takedown and then get in the escape after being on bottom. Norman Chow trying to get the backs. Got three back points. Rest gonna give it to him. Nine and two for Norman Shell. A few seconds left in the second period. After falling two and two here in the first in the first period of this match. Norm has taken a serious lead at the start of the third, but with nine and two. 
the freshman is really showing the coaches what he can do and really further proving the fact that he deserves a varsity spot here. After this third period, we'll be joined again by Nick Internosia, Hunter and Central's own uh, sports broadcaster, alongside Nick Brunetti from the Hunter and Central wrestling team. Armin Cello starting neutral in the third period, working towards that takedown. He's close, but not there yet. Blue Streaks with the legs, and Blue Streaks will get the two for the takedown. Nine and four, Norman Shaw. Minute 20 left in the third. That's one escape for Shaw. I'm looking for that hand control. Norman working on the edge of the mat here, trying to bring him back in. Referee looking for the out of bounds. That's a stalemate. So a wrestler can be out of bounds, or part of his body can be out of bounds, but what defines a wrestler completely out of bounds? So that's a good question. You know, the, uh, recently, I, as far well, I mean recently, I mean literally mean like this past season, um, you know, the, the state has uh, changed the way the out of bounds rule works. Right now is uh, you need two supporting points inside the uh, ring, and that'll be a win for Norman Shell at 10 to four. Hard and Central get the win, and uh, you know the the out of the, for out of bounds, the two knees need to be inside the mat at all times. As soon as those knees come up, that's gonna be out of bounds. Well, Nick, thank you. I will be talking with you again soon. I'm gonna now introduce Nick Internosia back for Hunter and Central Television. Great. Thank you. Welcome back, Nick. Thank you. All right. Comes to us again, the two being very aggressive in the first uh, part of the first period here. Kevin's getting some good control on top here. Kevin looking for some back points. Raskin not going to give him any. Two and zero with 120 left in the first. He's getting the backs. Will he get he the pin? He might have him here. Oh, out of bounds. Raskin going to call it out of bounds. Three back points for Kevin Ceresa. 5-0. Kevin being a senior this year, he's been really, uh, you know, really being a leader and a captain of this team. You know, he's been going out every match and being a captain. And, you know, he has every right to, you know, definitely driving the team, running the practices when coach is not there, and definitely making sure everyone's motivated. Um, so he's been an excellent part of the team um, his past four years and the three years that I've been part of the team here at Hunter Central. Well, that actually leads to one of the questions I was planning on asking you, Nick, uh, about the pl practice room. Kevin Ceresa, nice 160 win right the there. Uh, about the practice room, uh, obviously wrestlers, based on their performance and practice, will perform well uh, in matches. So you've been on the team. Uh, can you tell me any about kind of the, the tone of the practice room or how things are during, during practice? Dan Fermato, 170. Uh, you know, Nick, the, the wrestling room, it, it, you know, not a lot of people, not a lot of people see that, you know, the practices that go on. 
Uh, but, you know, in my opinion, the wrestling team is definitely one of the teams that work that work the hardest in the, in the wrestling room and during practice. You know, you know, we, we, we put on our sweatshirts and sweatpants just to work harder, you know, just to push ourselves. Um, you know, we put wet towels on the thermostat every every day, you know, not, you know, not to be funny, but, you know, it's to, to, to increase the temperature, to make ourselves work harder, and to push ourselves. So when we come out here on the mat, that we're giving 100%. Um, so, you know, the, like, you know, like you said, the tone in the practice room is, is just, it's very intense. It's, you know, it's hardworking. Um, you know, we have a sign above our door that says, before I walk through these doors, did I make someone better today? I have and, you seen know, that. We, 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 we take that to heart and we make sure that not only are you getting better, but are the guys around you getting better? Is your partner getting better? You know, you, you, you want to, you're not only, you know, making yourself get better, but you're making the team get better. You're making Heart and Central get better. And, you know, you're really working on the technique with your partner. And, you know, whether it's in groups or, you know, working one-on-one, -on -one, working on technique or strength or anything like that, you give it 100% in the room and you're going to give it 100% on the mat. So, you know, like I was, ta you know, like I was talking to, uh, to you before, you know, the, the, the commitment on this team is, is definitely needs to show on the mat, off the mat, and in the practice room as well. And I can see that's very important because even though that uh, when you're on the mat, you're by yourself versus another kid who's also by himself, in the practice room, you still have to help the team, and it's still a team sport, even though you're, you're going solo on the mat. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you're trying to make yourself better. The Informato 2-0, 30 seconds left in the first. Short time left in the first period. Model will take top. <laughs> I'll be for the first for Dan Fermato at 170. Red's choice. After the first period, the score is 2 0 Central. Kenegala is going to choose down for Dan. Dan Fermato aggressively trying to get out. Look for that escape, and he's got it with he's one. He's got one point. 3-0 in the second. Dan Fermato really working hard here uh, during this match to try and take control of his opponent to uh, yeah. capitalize on different moves. And there's a takedown. Dan with the takedown. He's getting the back points. 5-0 and Central. Might will have he get the here. pin? That's a pin for Hart Central. Dan Fermato at 170. It was a great job by Dan Fermato there. He got the pin, got the six points, and walked out. Amazing. Very aggressive at 170. 22 and 0 for the Red Devils. Oscar. 182. We got multiple guys to see what Coach Kanagawa puts out. It'll be Lucas Polkowski at 182. JV wrestler uh, coming up to varsity. You know, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, you know, sh showing some, you know, some great work in, in the practice room and definitely has shown coach um, the aggressiveness he, can, aggressiveness he can have on the mat and uh, get his chance uh, under the spotlight tonight. Warren Hills with the aggressive takedown. Lucas trying to get an escape. <laughs> Kyle 
Kowalski's down. 0-2 oh, for Warren Hills. Warren Hills Ryan Pukowski pretty hard here. Definitely giving some pressure. Pukowski trying to work up here. Definitely fighting hard. That's two back points for Warren Hills. Oh. And that's out of bounds. Almost got the escape there. Almost. Warren Hill's looking for some back points here. Kuskowski is struggling to get out of the pin. Yeah. And I'll be a pin here for 182 of Warren Hills. Um. Great effort by Lucas Pukowski. Team score right now is 22 and 6 for the Red Devils. Looking for carry for Warren Hills. Sent out Kyle Baird at 195. You know, Kyle's been, uh, you know, JV most of his uh, wrestling career, and you know, definitely's turned up the heat this past season, showing coach the aggressiveness that he has and. You know, now he's uh, you know starting varsity for uh, 182, bumping up to 195 today. Going for the legs there. Colbert with the shot. And he's got his two. That'll be a takedown for Barrett. Come on, where did it go? Two and zero Central with 130 left in the first. Oh, Barrett looking to run an arm bar. Oh, trying to get Warren Hills on his back. He's getting the back points. Giving Might the have pressure. A pin here. Getting back points, and yes. he gets the pin. Kyle Barrett with an excellent pin at 220. I mean, 195. I'm bringing score up to 20 and 6 for 100 Central. Angelo Crespo at 220, one of the seniors here. Angelo Crespo is especially showing the aggressiveness uh, in his first matches, in the first part of his matches here. Goes for the shot. Warren Hills with a shot. Angelo Crespo on the defense. And Angelo's reactions are just so quick whenever Warren Hills takes a shot. Um, which is definitely what you need when you're when you're on the mat, especially on your feet. Absolutely. <laughs> Warren 
Warren Hill's reaching for the legs. Angelo not giving him anything. That's a stalling warning on Central. Angelo looking for the Good throw. Good defense by Angelo. Could be a stalemate here, Nick. And it'll be a stalemate. Will go Four seconds left on the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. Wrestlers are back on their feet. And there's the first period. Warren Hills will take bottom. Warren Hills will get the escape. It'll be an escape. Warren Hills. Angelo's definitely got to turn up the heat here if he uh, wants to be aggressive through this entire match. Uh, the bounds. Angelo, quick on the defense. Still neutral here in the in the second minute left on the clock. That'll be a stalling on Central's part. It'll be one green. Oh, and two Warren Hills. This match has definitely kept both wrestlers uh, in the neutral position, which has created some some different scenarios that we're seeing here. Yeah, it's it's, it's such a heavy weight. You know, neutral neutral is one of those positions where like you know they, they like to tie up a lot, you know, a little less shots and like to keep that hand control. It's kind of what we've been seeing here. Short time left in the second. Three, two, one. The Reds' choice. Red will choose down in the third. Angelo can get out here. He'll be in good position to get a takedown and possibly be in the lead here. And he gets the escape. Angelo Crespo with the escape. I mean, another stalling call on Central, bringing the score 3 1. Hill showing some fakes. One minute 20 left in the third. One and three, Warren Hills. The crowd is really got to pick up the heat here. Crowd's getting riled up here.
out of bounds. A minute left in the third. Takedown, Warren Hills. Angelo's got to get up here and put himself in a position to get a takedown if he wants a chance to win this match. And just got work for an escape or turn. <laughs> Warren Hill's going to let him up, giving Central uh, automatic one point. Star in neutral. <laughs> 30 seconds left here in third period. Another takedown, he's gonna let him again. <laughs> Another stalling for Central, it'll be the third stalling in Central. Two points for Warren Hills. <laughs> That'll be two for Central. Worked really hard for that two just now. That is the end of the match, though. It's going to be a win by decision for Warren Hills, 9 to 5. Angelo Crespo at 220. 20 to 9 for Central. Ryan Joyce here at 285 heavyweight. Joyce looking for the takedown, he's got the single. Looking to trip. We're back to neutral. <laughs> Ryan Joyce has especially been doing uh, doing very well this year, uh, going against some uh, some state ranked guys are doing very well uh, some wins some losses but you know the losses you know it's like telling John before they're very close um, definitely once you can win that's out of bounds 41 seconds left in the first and just from watching wrestling before I know that the heavyweight match is just so different in the way that it works from any other match. Um, Absolutely. With the different moves or in mind aspects that would take place during the match. Stall warning on green. Short time left of the first. Nine seconds left. Excellent defense by Ryan Joyce in the first period. Orange Central is going to choose down for the second period. Central's choice. Ryan That's Joyce will get the escape. Central.
Warren Hills with the underhook, looking for the takedown. Warren Hills trying to work a takedown. Still neutral for, jo neutral for choice. One and zero in uh, with 50 seconds left in the second. Streaks looking tired. Both wrestlers are definitely working hard here trying to win the match. Joyce aggressive off the bat. Short time left in the second. Goes him in. Choice, blue streaks. Blue streaks, you can choose down for the third, but we got injury time. Injury time for the blue streaks. Hills will start on bottom as we roll into the third period. The one escape for Warren Hills is now one and one. This Minute 40 left in the third. Definitely a close match. Pushed off the mat. Wow. Ryan Joyce Jr. 285, looking to be aggressive here in the third period. Central. I don't see how very that, surprising there. How that was called. Very surprising. Ryan's got to take a shot here. It'll be blood time for Central's Ryan Joyce. 16 seconds left in the third. I still don't quite Hills. understand that stall call on Central. 
Yeah, I don't think that ref was looking at the right match here. Colin Stallin at Central. Very surprising. Short time left in third period. Joyce. He's <laughs> bleeding again. Ryan Joyce still bleeding here. Joyce with short time. Got to go here, got to go here. Short time, 10 seconds left in the third. That'll be a devastating loss for Ryan Joyce at 285 heavyweight. Very heated match. That stalling call was just now unbelievable. Comes back on is um John John come be <laughs> forfeit at 106 for Brett Unger freshman Welcome back, John. Thanks, Nick. All right, Central's 113, Colton Warshleski, another freshman uh, doing extremely well this year. Colton Warshleski is 9 and 3 on the year coming into this match. He is doing really well this year. Colton look for the control. Be out of bounds. Minute 20 left in the first, 0-0. Zero, zero. Colton had a very nice, very, a lot of speed there on that attack. Took his opponent down with relative ease, putting him up 2-0 here with one minute left in the first period. When he gets to the lower weight classes, Nick, is it is it one thing where like speed can uh, speed can really change the dynamic of a match? Absolutely, you know, as you see in Colton's match, a lot of the lower weights, especially. Um, it, the, the, the speed of the match is definitely changes, but that doesn't, you know, it, it, you can't forget the factor of technique because, you know, how, how fast you do a match does count, but it's how if you do the, if you, if you, if you do the uh, move right. You know, you got to do the move right, you got to do it quick. That's what, that's what really gets you the win. Cole Wachleski with the pin at a minute 40, 113, Cole Wachleski, freshman. Like you said, speed paired with technique is definitely going to be the deciding factor in a lot of these matches, Absolutely. and a lot of the very quick and low low weight class matches. That's when it's going to be the really the really big deciding factor. Up now for Hunter and Central, at the 120 weight class we have Jack Bauer. He is a junior. He's eight and two on the year. 
Jack Bauer, definitely a dedicated wrestler. Um, you know, putting in all the work, especially, you know, getting down a weight. Um, you know, he, he puts in the, the effort to, to definitely, you know, make that weight class, make that 120. And definitely puts the effort in the room, keeping serious and, and, you know, keeping his eye on the prize and showing that commitment to the team. 40 and 12 for the Devils right now. Jack Bauer at 120. I'll be a forfeit at 120. Bringing the Devils up 46 to 12. Here we have Anthony Rowanello, 126. You know, one of the Rowanello twins, uh, definitely showing uh, an improvement from last year. Uh, definitely stepping it up as a sophomore. Anthony Romanello showing a bit of speed here right off the bat. Really looking and really like observing. I, I see a lot so far, and we're only a few seconds into this this uh, this matchup here. But I see a lot of Vincent in Anthony. But a very it's, it's similar but very different. Anthony is very quick and very sporadic in his planned attacks, but he's still very like he waits back still to try and make his attacks. Absolutely, you know, you know, they're, they're totally two different wrestlers, and I, I've been able to watch them. You know, obviously not only in the practice room, but on the mat as well. Um, you, know, you couldn't be more exact. You know, they're definitely, I mean, this is, you know, a, a, a much more, I would say, you know, strategic in the way that he set how he sets up his shots and, and, and kind of waits. Anthony's, you know, very the same way, but Anthony's got that, that you know, that lengthiness in, in him and how you know how he wrestles. Um, definitely sets up, waits to set up, set up his shots. And you know you see the both uh, the same thing in both of them, but uh, they definitely have their own style. Fifty seconds left here in the first. Anthony Romanell with a shot. Warren Hills on the defense. That'll be nothing, still neutral. You said that a lot of the lanky wrestlers that are on the team have a lot of, or often go for the quick shots, the quick ones that they can just take down and like almost encompass their opponent right off the bat. Anthony didn't seem to really do that. He kind of hung back, but he still has the speed and like agility of being that that lanky and like thin wrestler. So I, I kind of see what you're talking about like when he's he, he's waiting back but also like ready to jump at the gun. Abs absolutely, you know, everyone's built differently and you know a lot of the lengthier taller guys um, will use that to their advantage. Um, you know, a, a lot of taller guys will tend to, you know, ride legs on top or uh, you know, it's easier for them to get out and stuff like that. I'll be a caution on uh, Warren Hills. But you know what I've seen Anthony is that he definitely waits to set up his shot um, you know, and that's just how he wrestles. But when he gets a shot, you know, you, you, using the, the strength and just how he's built, is he, he definitely goes for that uh, the takedown very quickly. That'll be a reversal for uh, Anthony Romanello here, second period, 2 0 Central. Anthony with the breakdown, pulling that arm in. Putting the head in the arm, we've seen that a few times tonight. Trying to get that pin. Now when when the uh, top wrestler drives his arm into the shoulder, is it is it literally just trying to force the, force the shoulder down, trying to get the pin? Or are you trying to get him to roll over onto his back to try and get back points as well? Yeah, so, so, so the pin is actually when, he, is when he's on his back, and the back points is just when he's really close to the mat, uh, but he still get back points for it. What he's trying to do right here is, he, is you saw him you know, put his head into the, sh the, the shoulder there, trying to get that arm bar. Um, what that arm bar does is pressures in and kind of keeps the guy's shoulders uh, down so he can't really post up. Uh, he's trying to drive him over that shoulder to the other side. And we've seen that with uh, with a few other matches, uh, like Vincent and Dan doing, trying to do the same thing. And the bar is definitely something amongst the team that has been uh, uh, really a beneficiary this year. Looking for that head lever, trying to set up an arm bar here. Watch it 
again, like we saw in Vincent's match, uh, it, they really took control in the second period. Absolutely. And um, they, they really took the first period to try and study their opponent and figure out how it is, how they're going to work. Again, Anthony using a lot more speed right off the bat, but still waiting back, trying to study their opponent. And here, Anthony taking a 2-0 lead at the end of the second. And really, uh, physically and mentally, um, crushing his opponent. Great choice here in the third period. Warren Hill's going to choose neutral. You know, yeah, ex exactly. You know, it's it, it all it all really depends on the wrestler. And you know, Anthony's got that speed, um, but you really definitely got. It's all about the setup. Anthony with the defense roll here. Both guys showing their fakes. Anthony trying to get a reaction. Looking for that wrist control. Straight double. Beautiful takedown for Anthony Romanello. Trying to get the half in for the pin. He's got the back points. Setting up, set on back here. Looking for the pin. Anthony with the legs. He's got three back points off for that. It's going to bring up to 7 0 here in Central here in the third. That was a beautiful sequence from, <laughs> sequence from uh, Anthony Romanello. He really went right in at the bell, or at the, the buzzer, excuse me, and took his opponent down rather beautifully and got the back points right off the bat. Absolutely, you know, John, it's just one remove right after another. You know, you can't, you can't really pause and and really think about what you you know what you want to do. You gotta you gotta have that, that that arsenal and you know and just and just you know keep taking them out of your arsenal and, and just set them up one after another. It's called chain wrestling. Is uh, we we practice that all the time. Is one move right after another. Just hit it no matter what. It doesn't have to doesn't have to work all the time, but just practicing you know going one after another. is definitely something that uh, you know helps Anthony here. You brought up the idea of chain wrestling, and it, right here at the end, Romano takes it with a sweep of 7-0, adding another few points for Hunter and Central. Beautiful so, win for Anthony. Uh, absolutely stunning. He really took control in the second and third periods. But you, you went back to that idea of chain wrestling and like having the idea of knowing what you want to do after you do something. And like you just can't go into it blindly, I think. Like you have to know like your plan, and again, that's where the come the technique and the speed comes in. You have to have all these things in order to be a, a successful wrestler. Absolutely, you know, it, it's one move after another. You should go out to every match knowing what you're going to do on top, knowing what you're going to do on bottom, knowing what you're going to neutral uh, before you even get there. Um, and that's that, that's kind of what chain wrestling is. You got to know what you want to do. Hunter Graf here at 132, four-year varsity member here at Hunt Central. Out of ankle pick by Hunter Graf. Out of every match match up here tonight, I was really excited to see here see uh, Hunter Graf wrestle tonight. Simply because I've heard so much about him, he's had such an historic time here at Central as a four-year letterman, and over already broken the hundred wins, uh, coming into senior or so, coming into senior year, maybe broken it early senior year, but absolutely stunning to watch so far. And we're not even a minute into the first period. Yeah, Hunter's just one of those wrestlers that you just you just want to watch. You know, it's it's just a great uh, a great thing to just just watch him wrestle and watch him just you know work everything and he does a great job with you know setting up moves and just executing them to uh, it's very precise and you know Hunter Graf is just one of, is is one of the few wrestlers um, here at Hunter Central to go through the program and take that you know over 100 wins um, you know last year he hit that 100 win mark no problem. And uh, we expected this year to get way above that. Right now, he's actually going for another record for the most wins at Harden Central um, to come through the wrestling program here out of all the wrestlers, which is a huge statement. And, you know, to, in my opinion, I think that he can really do it. Uh, but definitely takes some work. You know, there's some good guys in his bracket. Uh, when it comes to Atlantic City and States, you know, if he gets there, which, you know, I think he will, 
Um, we're definitely going to see some competition, but you know he's going to see those same guys during the season, and he can't take any guy lightly. Off the top of your head, Nick, do, what, do you know what the record for 100 Central number of wins is? Number of wins for 100 Central? The top of my head. You know, I couldn't tell you, John, but in, in my opinion, we have, we have definitely, you know, obviously we're more than, more than 500 here, um, but the, the amount of wins that, that we have just, you know, for the team is, is, is incredible. Um, but like I was telling Nick earlier, it's, it's, it, it really comes from the wrestlers um, doing, putting their work and putting their individual work to help the team. You know, it's an indi it's a team sport, but you're really putting that individual individuality out there on the mat and uh, giving it your all. Hunter Graff with a beautiful defense, and he'll get the reversal. Excuse me, takedown. Hunter Graff is going to give him the escape. Graff looking to set something up here. Nice breakdown by Hunter. Still nothing. Four and one here in the second. Minute 10. Graf right off the bat. Takedown two. Yeah, it's something that we've definitely seen here with Graf over the over all his years is the aggressive right off the bat, um, right off the whistle. You know, going for that ankle pick or that double, um, which you know we we've seen uh, you know a lot this year. Again, we can mention the men the mental like side of wrestling because Hunter had to make a choice to, to understand down. how to like how to take him down right off the bat and like not not wait for his opponent to come at him. He knows what he can do and what he can't, so he knows that he can either take him. He, he's gotten the pick twice now, I believe, in this in this match himself, and so he knows that he can get him on it. And the other uh, the opponent keeps falling for it, and then Hunter just takes it over in the end. Exactly. It's, it's all about setting it up. You know, it's all mentality. It's about knowing your moves, what you're going to do next. You know, you hear a lot of coaches tell you, you got to know what you got to do. Graf with the back points, looking for the pin. Three backs for Graf, making it 11-2. Coming to third period. We have blood time green. Graf is just is just one of those wrestlers that that really knows how to set up a, a set up a move and execute it, um, you know, very well. Um, he takes his time, um, which is not something you see in a lot of wrestlers. You know, they'll rush through mat, rush through uh, moves and miss some things or or not have a good grip on some things. Uh, but he definitely takes his time. It's definitely uh, proven to be a, a a huge factor for him amongst his matches. Graf with the takedown. Graf right off the bat, escaping and then with the reversal. It was amazing to see. And for the power half here, getting his backs. 
Looks like it's going to be a tech fall here. That's a tech fall for Hunter Graff, winning by more than 15 points. What an amazing win here for Hunter and Central. Your final score, Hunter and Central fit Red Devils 54, the Warren Hills Blue Streaks to 12. Nick, we came in expecting a really big Central win, and again, you have to come in expecting, you have to, you have to want to win every game, and it was an amazing thing to watch, Hunter and Central come together for this, uh, this huge win over the Warren Hills Blue Streaks. Yeah, absolutely, you know, what an uh, amazing win, great effort by everyone. And you know, honestly, the, the losses are, are just, it, it's a small thing, small things we have to work on. Um, and you know, we're definitely gonna execute that in the room on Thursday and Friday and uh, ready for a match against uh, West Deptford, uh, West Deptford this weekend. So, you know, great, you know, great job by everyone and just, you know, work hard in the room and uh, ready for some upcoming matches. So we got West Deptford. Uh, tomorrow, and then we got Phillipsburg coming yeah, up West, next week. West Denver Saturday. Saturday, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, and then we got Peeberg uh, next week, so uh, getting ready for those matches. Well, Nick, thank you for joining us. Thanks, and John. We wish you the best thank of luck you. on thank Saturday. You. For 100 Central TV, I'm John Tedenica, along with Nick Internacio. Thank you. Have a good night.